Hi and welcome to this tutorial on alkenes and polymers. So in this tutorial it's basically following on from the crude oil um, fractional distillation and the cracking of crude oil um, tutorials. So I recommend you have a quick look at them um, first or after this tutorial. So an alkene is basically a hydrocarbon, so it's a hydrocarbon which is a molecule made up of hydrogen and carbon um, but it has um, a double bond usually or always a double bond now by definition you should only have one double bond but um, you can have um, other you can have multiple double bonds throughout a larger molecule we're just going to look at um, one double bond in a hydrocarbon for now and I'll show you a formula for, for working that out as well. So an alkene, the simplest alkene we have is ethene. Now if you remember from the uh, tutorial on, on cracking of crude oil this is a, this one of the byproducts. Uh, it's a very useful byproduct because it can be used to make polymers and I'll, I'll show you about that later. So that's ethene, never write that in blue, that's ethene. So the naming of um, of uh, molecules is the same same process. So we've got um, the the first, um, if it's got one carbon, then the first name would be meth something. But obviously if it's got one carbon, you can't have a double bond because there's not another carbon to have a double bond with. You can't have a double bond with hydrogen because hydrogen only has valence of one, so you'll only want to form one bond carbon wants to form four so we have um, actually four bonds here even though it's only connected to three elements it has four bonds it's got a single bond here a single bond here and a double bond between the carbon and the other carbon so this is our first alkene ethene sometimes called ethylene ethylene okay so that's ethene so we take um, we take the next molecule in the series, and that should start with prop. Remember propen from the um, crude oil, so this should be propene. And the one after that, butene. So that's got so I'll put number of carbons. Number I mean number number of C's here. And that's got two, three, and four. I'll just draw this one. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just highlight this one in blue because that's already in blue. So I'll just make that blue and I'll make that blue. Okay, I'll do the next one in black. So I have a draw this one in black. So the next one is propene, so I need three carbons. Let's put the three carbons in first. Now it's up to me where I decide where I put the double bond, so I'll put the double bond on this side. I'll add the hydrogens again. Just have one there, one there, one there. And we just go around checking the valency. In fact, I'll just undo that last hydrogen because it does like it. Make it a bit wider than that double bond, that single bond doesn't interfere. I'm just going to go around and check the valency. So hydrogen's got one, carbon's got one, two, three, four, that hydrogen's got one, one, two, three, four, that's right. This carbon on the end, one, two, three, four, so that's all okay. I could have drawn the double bond on this side, but if you imagine spinning the molecule around, it's exactly the same as spinning it around, isn't it really? So if I spin it about this point here, I pick it up, imagine I pick that carbon up with my fingers, and I turn it around, and the double bonds over the other side, so it doesn't really matter which side I put it on. So that's propene, that's the next one. So the next one is butene, so we've got to put four carbons in. I'm just going to move this down a bit, I might draw it in red. Move it a little bit down, let's see if I can get a nice red. Okay orange orange will do okay so we've got four carbons to draw one two three 
before you notice this zigzag pat pattern as well and that's basically I'm trying to represent the shape that it would have in three dimensions and we'll, we'll cover that in um, further tutorials on more advanced lessons but this is just through habit that I write a zigzag pattern rather than a straight pattern um, it doesn't really matter if you want to at this stage if you want to write it as a as a, a pattern like that that's perfectly acceptable at this stage okay and I just write that because that's the that's more or less what the real shape looks like in Okay, so I'll draw this nice now. Now then, we have a bit of a dilemma here because I could put the double bond there, or I could put it there, but that's a bit like spinning around that point there. So that double bond there and that double bond there is more or less the same. Or I can now have the option of putting the double bond in the middle, and that is different. We didn't have that option before, so I might have to draw another molecule. Because we can actually have the double bond in two places for this molecule so I just put all my hydrogen back on okay so that's that one now I'm gonna have to move these up a little bit so if I just some magic on this shrink that up like that so we can still see it oh that's not really nice just shrink it in a bit okay so move these up a little bit then we can focus on butene okay that's a bit better just want to make it more clear to see so we've got all the valences right so we've got one two three four around that carbon hydrogen still one one, two, three, four, that's right. One, two, three, four, that's all right. And again, we've got four there, so that's all right. So that's one form of butene. Now we have another form with a double bond in the middle. So let's see if that works as well. Put the hydrogens on. Hydrogen there. Hydrogen there. Hydrogen there. And another one. Okay, so four, one, two, three, four, yep, one, two, three, four, that's right, one, two, three, four, that's all right, and one, two, three, four, that's right. I've not done the hydrogens because they're only connected via one bond, so they're all, all right. Now that is a double bond in the middle of butene. It's still called butene. Um, and these, because these can exist like this, and you don't know where the double bond's going to be, unless you do some other test then these are called isomers and this is might be a new word for you and it's called isomers so I'll try and write that in red uh, or what have we got here pink oh, I've got red here we are so these are called isomers and what I'll do that's an I so what I'll do is uh, I'll write a definition of what isomers means on, on the website somewhere uh, near this video. So basically an isomer has got the same molecular formula but a different shape if you will. So it, it can exist as a different shape. So here we've got a double bond here rather than here. And, and this is really important because when you're trying to work out the shape of a, a molecule then or work out the, the or characterize it and, and prove it is that actual molecule then sometimes little things like this can really throw you because you don't know where the double bond is or something like that so that's I thought I'd introduce you to isomers and butene is a really good example of, of where you'll first come across isomers anyway and just before I end this I just want to get a different color pen um, on marker section out here in brown just before I end this, if you can just look at this screen, because I don't want to really delete all that. And I'll choose a nice colour, green. We can actually come up with a formula for the, the, the molecular formula. And if I put the carbon and the hydrogen in here. Now you remember alkenes from the previous tutorials, where CN, 
n back in. n was a number, so here it's 2. So that's this, this bit which needs to move across. I'll just move this across. So the number of carbons, move butene across, in for ethene or ethylene is 2. Now the number of carbons in propene is 3 and the number of carbons in butene is 4. Now if you want to work out the number of hydrogens then the formula is simply CnH2n. Okay? That's a 2. So CnH2n. So let's try it out with um, ethene 2. So C is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we are. For propene 3. So C3H6 it should be. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And similar for butene, now it doesn't matter which isomer you use, that's the word isomer here. Yeah. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, so it should be C4H8. So we count these, we've got, we've got 1, just undo that, do it in a different colour. Let's choose that nice light green. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And same with this one because it's just nice man. So that is the um, the formula for working out you've, whether you've got an alkene or not. And that's slightly different to alkanes because remember alkanes you had to add another two onto that. So that's alkenes. Now just before I end this because I did mention polymers at the beginning of this tutorial, I'll just I'll just delete this all these. I'll just move them over to the side a little bit. Okay, I need to bring some things back. We'll just have a look at ethene. So this is ethene. I'll just blow it up a little bit. Or ethylene. Now you can do um, a reaction with this under high pressures. So high pressures. I'll put P for pressure. Under high pressure, in fact I'll write pressure just in case. And temperature or a catalyst. So I'll put catalyst. I have to excuse my ears, they tend to turn into uh, strange alphas or something like that. They this can actually what's called polymerize and give you polymer. So it reacts with itself, and that's because it's unsaturated. So we just change the color to black. This can then go off to give carbon, 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 carbon. Okay, with hydrogen stuck on. Because it's it opens up here, the, the first time it happens, you have some catalyst or something stuck on there, and that'll basically ping that open there to react with another one of them and I'll, sh I'll actually show you the mechanism now the mechanism is a bit too advanced for this tutorial but I'll show you the mechanism because if you're like me you want to know well how can that happen so I'll give you a, a, a simple version of the mechanism and basically that goes on forever that's a very very long chain and that is called for this case so we start off with ethylene or ethene, you got polythene. And you've probably heard of polythene as a plastic, you know, sort of polythene bags or, or or something like that. So we take a molecule, I'm gonna draw it in this form, and it's like that. I'm just looking at this carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. A unit as a, as a ball and what happens is it turns into this doesn't it and that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and these are really big molecules these are not this is this is small it's got two carbons and these can have millions of carbons yeah at least thousands of carbons have molecular weights of hundreds of thousands and then you do all fancy things, you can 
what's called cross-link them and then you get into millions of ways but we won't go into that so this is basically what happens now let's let's draw the catalyst let's just imagine we've got a catalyst in there and this catalyst it doesn't matter what it is for now because we have not really defined what a catalyst is anyway but imagine a catalyst is something like um, somebody with a bat and they whack that and this is a bucket of water okay right. you just have to uh, go with me on this one so this is a bucket of water that goes in there bang whacks out what's going to happen to that bucket of water the water is going to come out and what we've done we've created another bat effectively so that that hits that pushes the electrons out of this bond just like you if you whack a bucket of water the water is going to leave but it's got nowhere to go apart from hit another one and then what happens then is that it comes out like that and it just keeps doing it and doesn't stop and you go whack and then you see it just keeps adding together but what happens this is the magic bit what happens here well what's actually happening well when that one leaves and hits that one those electrons are then shared between these two so what happens is you end up with I'll draw that as red so this is zooming in on this bit you actually end up with that look and then that goes off towards the other one so if I draw I'll draw the catalyst if you will in red let's just imagine it goes around this it might not do but it's a really good um, example I suppose of how it could start and uh, it's, it's not too far off the truth to be fair so these electrons here have become these electrons here so they've all they've done instead of having a double bond with that ox uh, sorry that carbon it does look a bit like oxygen but it's not meant to be with that carbon there that's then um, formed a bond with that one and obviously that can't have too many bonds around it if we look at this diagram it can only have four um, it, has, it has to lose one if it's formed another one it has to lose one and, and it does that by forming another one and another one and another one and that gives you really large molecular weights and rather than being a gas it then turns into a solid and these solids have got remarkable properties as you know uh, what um, polymers have they can you know they have uh, plasticity and, and things like that you know you know, your typical carrier bag so without going into too much detail of polymers and with this was mainly to do with alkenes and how they can be used to make polymers um, that is the end of the tutorial but I will do another tutorial on polymers because they're very fascinating because you can imagine cross-linking them like that and we'll talk about Kevlar and all that kind of stuff and it's quite, it's quite an interesting topic so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, please tune in and look for the other ones that are related goodbye